Thank you so much, Jesse. I would believe anything that Octane said. Uh, we know. Phenomenal interview. <laughs> down there on the floor but let's break down the series game by game the first thing i feel like i need to say is lg they got the win that they needed to get but unilad already showed that they do have that potential for upsets it's definitely something that i think we can see from them a little bit later as we progress here in division b but let's start things off with the first map that we actually saw let's jump into that first hard point yeah, I mean, it was London Dodge Hardpoint. I mean, again, this was, a I feel like, a mode that Luminosity wanted to play, right? They wanted to challenge Unilad just with their pure gun skill. And if you look at the scoreboard, the slaying wasn't crazy. Slack had a, a great start, but look at the score, 147 to 81. To me, that just means Luminosity, they're winning rotations, they're holding the, the key gunfights that allow them to keep those spawns, and that was really just sort of the story of this whole match number one. There was nothing crazy that Luminosity was doing. It was, just, it was dominance, right? Like, Octane even said that, like, hard points are best game mode. You even look back to the finals that they had against TK. They won, like, three out of the four hard points against yeah. TK, who we've been touting as, like, the best hard point team. So, obviously, Luminosity is going to be fantastic. That map number one, it, it was no, nothing really stands out from an individual performance. It was just straight across the board. Everyone from LD j did their jobs. Yeah, I think that is the thing when we look at this one. It was just textbook hard point. They played very well as a unit. Yeah, I, I think so. I, and if you look at that scoreboard, I mean, two and three, like street and warehouse, that just means that Luminosity, they're giving up a lot of time on statue. They're winning rotation at hill number two. Then they're also either breaking hill three, which we know is sort of that money hill, or they're also winning rotation of that. So if you unilad, you can't allow that to happen. Now, when we get into the SND, it's the same story. Not too surprised to say it. First Bloods, pretty important. Yeah, no, I, if you want to win Search and Destroy, get the first kill. That is definitely going to uh, help you along your way. And I think LG, they got eight out of nine. So, I mean, again, it's a situation of, well, if you get the early start, things are going to go fine. Of course, obviously, the strategy switch up is important to mention as well. Of course, early on, uh, it was a lot of success for Unilad over by A. And Octane even said, all right, we can just two stack that, and then we should be good to go. So strategy worked out well for them. They went eight and nine for first blood. That's obviously huge. And then even on this map, they were like four and one in NOLA, so this is just LG's strength. Yeah, so to, to elaborate a little bit, Joe, why do you think LG was able to get so many first bloods? Does it all come down to strategy? Does it come down to how they're switching things up? Uh, I, I just think it came down to sort of the way Unilad was playing, especially when you're attacking an A-bomb site. It's a lot of open field gunfights. Really what that just means is that Unilad's trade, trading them very quickly. Again, as you can see, the first you know six rounds, they're just trading back and forth. If you're Unilad, I like the way they attacked A. They did it from the middle, they did it from field, but they didn't switch it up. They didn't try to go B. When you win three offensive rounds in a row, you have to know that defense is gonna make adjustments, right? Like you would assume so. So they should have known that someone was gonna either leave middle or play towards that A side that would have left an opening up for Luminosity, but they kept going A. And obviously LG made adjustments, were able to shut it down. So I feel like Unilad was just a bit too confident in their A pushes, just switch it up. You know, try to set a precedent that, hey, at some times we do go B. Besides that, LG, as soon as they made those adjustments, took over. Yeah, and you could see that. You could see all of a sudden they start getting the first bloods. That's going to result in them taking the SND. CTF, things go absolutely bonkers. And uh, just a small note, Maven's cursed 100%. Every time he casts <laughs> this map for CTF, it goes into overtime. But Chance, let's talk about how it actually got to the OT. Right, like both teams had opportunities to make this game a lot like farther apart than it actually turned out to be because like right off the rip it was Unilag they go up one nothing and they get fully streaked out from scraps with a fantastic game by the way but uh, a lot of opportunities but then their streaks were sort of ineffective I mean we heard the comms of LG let's make sure we switch to mountain but even still after it was the streaks came in for Unilag LG was just constantly pouring on the pressure and like Unilag just had to burn their streaks they could never find themselves in like perfect situations to use them uh, and of course that's gonna make it a lot more difficult to pull flags yeah I, I mean honestly it was just a couple of plays for luminosity they they were on the attack during regulation most of the time you know that had some great defensive stands that really allowed them especially on that bunker side when they were defending that bunker side they were doing such a great job luminosity could have had four or five caps but the defense was super strong for you know that then going into overtime I mean John decides to pull that flag out. As you as you heard Octane, he felt he made a bad play. He was holding down fire tank. I think he gave up something for like one second, gets taken out. 
and then they leave John alone. And you could kind of tell that they weren't in that situation too often because as soon as one guy spawned up, he decided to wrap back to his flag and try to play defense. But in reality, there was only 35 seconds left. John has the flag out. All you have to do is defend him. And they just seemed a, a little bit lost during that situation. And you know were able to clutch it. The other thing too, I will point out, not just statistically, Scraps was a huge yeah. factor to that win. Yes, he puts up a lot of kills for his team. He does have the best statistics. You saw that on that box score, but it was when he was able to get those kills. There's also a play Scraps had where like he comes off spawn on Bell when LG's pulling the flag and he's trying to call in streaks to stop him and he gets shut down by Slack instantly. Yeah. And that's another one of those plays where like if he had just gotten down behind cover called in the streaks maybe they stopped the flag but uh, again it was a ctf game where the stops on defense were huge for uni lad but there's a lot of potential again for either side to really kind of take the game away and that is going to push it to a game number four and when we got there we get to this next hard point what what exactly went down joe i mean you know i just came out very strong and i was talking to the eg guys and they said this is saint or the saint marie is their strongest hard point they know that you know they played in new orleans they beat phase on it i'm pretty sure they they either played close or beat tk on it so maybe it was just lg playing to their comfort not knowing the strengths of unilad but the one that stand stood out to me was moose moose had a had a great start to the game he wasn't slaying too too well uh, in the games prior but he stepped it up but then octane just kind of took over he got two sets of streaks that allowed luminosity to win some key rotations especially going to that final parking lot and, and of course that out, outlook or outpost outlook post yeah there, there you go uh, that that fourth hill that allowed him to call in the streaks win those rotations and, and where they were able to clutch up yeah, I, I will say though that like I, I think that's an important map for Unilad to get right. Like coming, like they don't want to get 3 0 Obviously, winning the CTF is huge, but even playing the Saint Marie as close as they did, I think you can take some positives away from it. Obviously, it's a heartbreaking loss towards the end, but you're going against the best team in the game, or, or at least the best team in Division B. So uh, I think there's no love lost. I think they could go back over their mistakes and at least learn from them. But again. Uh, it's a situation where it, it was Shawnee and Moose, I think, needed to step up for the team. Towards the end, they did just that. So, you knew that, uh, again, a lot of promise, and we got plenty of Call of Duty left to play. And that was just a great map to watch, and the very end of it is actually going to be our play of the game presented by Scuff. We're going to take a look at this one right now. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, Luminosity, they, they know that you know that well they can't win right here john is able to pick up that big eight seconds that doesn't matter this is what really matters octane as we said he was able to pick up two sets of streak here's his second one calls in the glide bomb there is a player on unilad who does have mountain but as soon as he calls in this fighter pilot jcap picks up two octane picks up two that completely clears the board look at the mini map all control for luminosity they were able to close it, and, and what a comeback that was in game four. And, and you know, Luminosity, we, we heard Octane say that this is one of their strongest game modes right now. Unilad really puts up a fight there. That is going to be our play of the game, though, presented by Scuff. And now we're going to see John having a standout performance in that one. But uh, overall, I just want to emphasize how well Unilad really did play. And again, that's what they need to do uh, against all of these teams. If they want any shot at making playoffs, they have to play at that level the entire time. And they obviously can't afford to let the other teams clutch up. But like, it, it's not going to be really an easy road for Unilad at all, right? Because yes, LG is tough, but like Splice, even with Fellow, is going to be tough competition. EG is going to be tough competition. Envy looked great uh, against FaZe early on. And then FaZe is tough competition as well. So Division B, it, it's going to be a bloodbath. Obviously, Unilad has a lot of promise but uh, i think realistically they're going to be playing like the upset potential kind of team of they're going to take quite a few maps off a lot of the top teams yeah. and they're going to steal at least one series if not multiple but again even potential for them to make playoffs it's a long way to go but definitely a team to look out for if you're a europe fan and, and this is one that hurts i mean yes it's uh potentially the best team is in this division in luminosity you know coming off that second place finish at new orleans but you heard scrap say it on hot mic when he feels that they th there's games they should win it completely demoralizes him personally because he just looks back at it. He knows the potential of this squad. They could have took this to a game five and game fives. Well, we know throughout this year, they can be pretty 50 50 besides TK, of course. But I, I mean, this is one that Unilad would, would love to have back in that game four. Well,